Luckily, I didn't have to wait one million years to get Francisco Liriano on the mound. This was the very first ranked seasons game I played today, and Liriano was on the hill. So that's exactly what I wanted to happen, man. Didn't want to uh, put Liriano in the rotation and then wait God knows how many games. But this card is actually pretty sick. Like I was saying in previous videos multiple times, 80 Ks per 9 is not too bad. 97 break is obviously very good. And 76 velocity is not too bad either, man. Really the only problem with this card is the, the walks per 9 and the control. That's that's really the only issue with this card, if you ask me. Like, yeah, even 80 Ks per 9 is not too bad. The hits per 9 is 80 as well, I'm pretty sure, too. So, 86 overall pitcher. I mean, I've seen some diamond pitchers in this game that are much worse than this Liriano, if you ask me. So, I was hoping I could get a good performance out of him. Probably going to leave him in the rotation for a good amount of time. Unless he goes out there and struggles. It's good. I need another lefty in the, in the rotation, too, because I don't really like using John Lester. And the flashback CC Sabathia too, I haven't really been doing that well with him either. So I need another lefty that I could use and possibly wheel and deal with. And a little note for everyone too, if you want to use this Liriano, my suggestion is you have to go to the slide step every single time somebody is on base. Every time you're pitching out of the stretch, you have to go to the slide step or everybody will be stealing on you, man. Because, yeah, even somebody with shitty speed. Like, even fucking Jorge Posada could probably snag some bases against Liriano with that slow, that slow delivery in the stretch. So, that's just the case. If you don't like using the slide step, then you're probably not going to like using this Liriano. But I don't really mind using the slide step that much. So, I'm not making really any complaints so far. But this guy had Rich Hill on the mound. Sometimes, I just hate. I can't stand facing these, these pitchers who can't barely throw heat. And then they have these big, I guess I should say lefties. Lefties who throw these, you know, 91, 92 mile an hour fastballs and then have these little looping curveballs. I find it throws off your damn timing because you go from facing these guys throwing 98, 99. Like the last ranked season game I played, I think it was the last one I played. or It was one of the, it was, it was either the last one or the one prior to that. I played a guy with James Paxton on the mound. He's throwing 98, 99 on the gun. And then you go facing uh, Rich Hill, somebody throwing 92 if you're lucky, throwing these looping curveballs in. Throws off your timing if you ask me. So righties, it's not really a problem I don't find. Like when I face Alex Cobb and other pitchers who don't really throw heat that much, I really like I really like facing righties who don't really throw heat and throw looping curveballs. But lefties, sometimes I can I find that it's kind of annoying. So I wasn't really getting much going early on in this game. First two innings went by, did not even get a base hit so far. But I was squaring a lot of shit up, man. This guy was, this guy was hanging so many curveballs this game. You will see what I'm talking about in a couple of minutes or a couple of seconds. But this guy was hanging so many curveballs. I was making some good swings on a lot of them too, but wasn't really able to find find any holes, shoot one up the gap or something like right there. That was a solid swing with Lindor goes to his uh, right fielder. So. Lucroy is up. He broke the I think he broke the goose egg in the previous game. Squad didn't have a base hit up until this is this has been the case over the past couple of games I find for myself. It takes me around three innings to get going, and then usually or not really the last game, but some games I find that if you go like a three or four innings without getting a base hit, around the fourth, fifth inning, shit will just go off and you'll be getting base hits every single time you come to the plate. Which is good. Because a game like this, like I was saying, it was throwing off my timing because, yeah, you're used to, everyone's used to facing so many flamethrowers in this game. And then that's why I was always saying in 16 that I struggle against knuckleballers. Because, yeah, you go from facing these guys throwing heat all the time and then you gotta face knuckleballers and these guys throwing looping curveballs and 91 mile an hour fastballs and shit. But fourth inning rolls around and Brantley gets the first base hit for the squad so thank god <laughs> thank god i wasn't going to the late innings with a goose egg on the board but yeah man i was squaring a lot of stuff up just really wasn't finding any holes and shit but hoping i could get the bats going now that i did get the first base hit on the board and griffey's just sending one uh to his shortstop and he doesn't turn two right there so i still have somebody on first base for bautista I think I actually made a pretty solid swing in Bautista's first at bat, but it went right to his uh, center fielder or something. But like, look at all these curveballs, man! This guy, this guy was just hanging curveballs like I I never even thought in a million years this guy would continue to do it, and he was. 
Every single inning, this guy was just looping in curveballs. They hit a missile right out of his shortstop, so unfortunately wasn't able to cash in any runs. So now Nelson Cruz is up. He's going down swinging. I think that was the first K of the ball game for Liriano, so maybe... In the middle innings, I can start to heat up with Liriano as well. Even though this guy doesn't have a lot of base hits either, wasn't really, wasn't really ripping the cover off the off the ball when he every whenever he was c coming to the plate and stuff. But didn't have any K's up until I faced Nelson Cruz. So now Daniel Murphy is up is up looking to get another one too. Now in the what is it top of the or bottom of the fourth inning, and I'm able to get him swinging on the inside slider. So there's back to back K's. So I was figuring I was gonna start to heat up with Liriano. Apparently not. Next guy coming to the plate is Brian Dozier, I believe, and he is sending one yard. So this guy is going up in this game one zip with Freeman coming to the plate next too. So I don't know if anyone heard, speaking of Freeman, if, uh, this is a little heads up for anybody who wants to see some crazy shit go down possibly. If you want to see a brawl, there is, I'm not even joking, there's a 99% chance that there's going to be a brawl in the Jays and Braves game tonight. Tonight. There is most likely going to be a brawl, man. If you don't know what happened, the Jays were just out there plunking Braves batters every single two seconds, it seemed. They, how many people did they I think they had seven. I think they had seven uh, Braves players in, what, three games? That doesn't even matter if it's intentional or not, man. That's Especially when you hit Freeman, and not only did they hit Freeman, Loop fucking hit Freeman, and he broke his hand. So Freeman is currently out. I'm not really sure how long he is out for. I just saw that he broke his hand. Didn't really see how long he's going to be on the DL for or anything. But, dude, you're breaking one of the best players. Like, Freeman's probably one of the top candidates for MVP, obviously, at this point in the season. You're out there breaking his hand. And Bautista's out there bat-flipping. And <laughs> Bautista's fucking crazy, man. That guy is on crack. I swear to God, that guy is uh, sniffing something. That guy's crazy. That guy's out here bat-flipping when he's down five, when their team is... Fucking team is down five runs late in the game. Bautista's out there throwing the bat up five feet in the air. That guy is crazy. Five feet in the air, 15 feet up in the air. Bautista is is just insane, man. So Bautista was out there. Kevin Pilar and Jason Maud, I'm pretty sure, were out there chirping each other. There is going to be some shenanigans going down in this game tonight. I'm sure by the time a lot of people hear this, the game will most likely be all said and done. But if you're watching this video be before that game starts... Definitely tune into that game if you want to see some shit go down, man, because there is going to be some some fireworks. And I'm not guaranteeing anything. Don't want anyone to watch that game and be like, you fucking guy, you told me to watch this game and nothing happened. Well, if you saw the first three games that these teams played, you would think that there's going to be something going down in this game tonight. But if you want to see something crazy go down, then definitely tune into that game tonight. It's very unfortunate. That Freeman broke his hand, dude. I was actually pissed when I heard that. I fucking hate Aaron Loop. I do. I've always hated him. He fucking stinks. And then he's out there breaking Freddie Freeman's hand. Oh my god. I'd be I if I was like Matt Kemp or something, I'd be running at the Jays dugout with a bat in hand. At at, at or actually what am I saying? Running to the Jays bullpen with a bat in hand, swinging for Loop's head. So anyway, back to this game. Just wanted to say that just in case anyone wanted to see some potential craziness go down tonight this guy's able to get a solo shot on the board with Nelson Cruz I, I can't stand facing Nelson Cruz in this game too it seems like that's another glitch in this game everything this damn guy puts in play seems to be a home run so I'm, I'm going down in this game again this guy's going up 2-1 we're now late in this game it's the top of the seventh inning really haven't gotten that much going yet I mean when you're getting calls like that you just I mean I don't know man high curveballs and shit and all that's craziness. You don't really expect that to be called strikes. But Troy Tulowitzki was able to get the solo shot in his previous previous at bat. And then right there, that's going off the wall. But this guy's making a terrible decision not hitting the cutoff, man. And I figured he was going to do that. He was doing that all game long. Wasn't hitting the cutoff, man. And Tulowitzki gets the inside the park home run. So Tulowitzki has been going off the past couple of games. I'm going to be leaving him in. Uh, I'm not even sure how long, but he's been playing the best out of all the shortstops I've been using, so he's probably going to be in there for a good amount of time. So it's now tied in the bottom of the seventh inning. Freeman is back up again. I was saying this was probably going to be uh, Liriano's last inning. He did very good in the debut game, man. Had a couple Ks. Not really sure how many he had. He only had three or four max. And, I mean, this guy wasn't really making solid swings every single time he came to the plate. Later in the game, maybe. But first off, he wasn't really, you know, ri ri ripping the cover off the ball like I was saying. But, 
Yeah, he did do a good job in his debut game, man. That's all I could ask for. I mean, it is a tie game, so unfortunately he's leaving, and he's not able to get the win in this game, unfortunately. But who who cares? As long as as long as I do end up getting the win, doesn't even matter who is on the mound. It's all right. Lucroy is starting this in and off. That was actually a pretty solid swing as well, but that's just going to his right fielder too. So now McCutcheon is in. Now in the top of the eighth inning, he is shooting one to right field, and that one is getting down. Not really sure what the hell this guy was doing out there in right field, but I just make it into second base with McCutcheon. Kind of got lucky right there, but then Griffey is up. This guy was just looping curveballs in. And like I was saying, like everyone was seeing all game, this guy was just hanging these breaking balls. So whenever he was just trying to sneak in a fastball, it was kind of catching me off guard. And then Griffey goes down swinging to end that inning. So now we are we're in the bottom of the eighth inning. This guy's making another crucial mistake. He's, what, what the hell was that? I'm getting him trying to go back to first base. So now we're in the top of the ninth. And Arenado is leading things off. Another hanger. This guy, like, after around the fifth inning or so, I just was just sitting on curveballs, man, because this guy was legit every single at bat four or five times. This guy was just hanging curveballs. I wasn't able to cash him in, though. I didn't do anything else uh, with somebody in scoring position, which seems to be typical at this point in time for me. So now we're in the bottom of the ninth inning. Carter Caps is in. Like I was saying, that was going to be Francisco Liriano's. Uh, last inning pitched. I think that was the seventh actually, but now we're in the ninth inning. This guy is getting a base hit. I think there's two down at this point though, so it's it's all right. It's you know it's not too bad with two down. It's, I'll take that. That's not the worst situation in the world with Jose Ramirez coming to the plate. This guy was he was actually making a lot of good swings with Ramirez, I remember, and then right there he's doing the same. So that's getting by Freeman at first, so here we go. Is this guy going to possibly get a two-out rally going? All he needs to do is just send something up the gut, possibly, even though I got Griffey out there in center field. Anything possibly to the outfield could maybe get the, the winning run in, but I'm luckily able to get Freeman swinging on the inside heat. So now Lindor is leading this inning off, and man, fucking check swing. And all that BS is still happening, but I'm getting lucky right there. Granderson is off the bench, and what a surprise. Pinch hitter. There's a swing and a high drive into left center field. Gordon going back, and that one is out of here. A two-run shot that gives them the lead. I'm telling you, man, I don't know how this is continuing. Granderson. Every single, that's not even close to an exaggeration. Every single time Granderson comes off the bench, he's doing something clutch. So the two-run shot gives the squad the lead. We're now in the bottom of the 10th inning. First guy come to the plate is Alex Gordon. He's flying out. First out comes fairly quickly. So Ryan Braun is up next. He's going down swinging on that looping curveball. Soria responds back with his looping curveball. So now two are down. I'm not looking for another 2 out rally to start. No chance in hell at this point in time in the game. Now in extra innings, I'm able to get him to ground out into the shift. So I'm able to get another win. So I think I'm currently, yeah, I'm 2-1 in this new season so far. Last game was, I think I lost by five runs, but it should have been closer than it actually was. Tulewitzki gets player of the game, which I guess is well-deserved. He was 2-4 for four with two home runs. One was an inside the park. So as always, guys, if you enjoyed, leave a thumbs up, and I will see everybody in the next video.